Okay, welcome back everyone to our final segment, wrap up day two of our coverage of uh, live wall-to-wall, -wall, two days coverage of Red Hat Summit. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with my co-host this week, Stu Miniman from Wikibon. I'm going to also be at the OpenStack Summit, also a bunch of other events. Stu, I thought it was a great week and I and, uh, want to say it was a real pleasure co-hosting with you, subbing in for Dave Vellante. Not subbing in, but usually it's Dave, but you're the, the lead on the, on the cloud and infrastructure. Um, I thought it was pretty amazing. I mean, I, we had a lot of Red Hat executives, but we needed that. I really wanted to hear from them, and I learned a lot uh, about what they're doing and a chance to ask some uh, pointed questions. Also talk off camera um, and get a lot of insight. So I want to ask you first thing, what's your key insight walk away from this show? Yeah, John, you know, it, it's been great to get to know the culture and some of the key players inside of Red Hat. Uh, it, it's been said that if you look at the big open source communities, it, it, it takes a big personality and some leaders like a Jim Whitehurst uh, to be able to drive this forward. Um, and, and I think we see you know, a coming out party here. Um, Red Hat has always been a good partner in the ecosystem, um, you know, driving that Linux message out, and they're, they're really trying to increase their position in the marketplace, uh, try to become the you know, Red Hat of OpenStack, uh, trying to you know, push their virtualization solution more, uh, going out after the developer community, I mean, John, you know, 4,500 people here at the Red Hat show and 700 at Dev Nation. So we've been to a lot of shows. When I look at kind of a percentage of the show that actually drew in developers, this has got to be one of the highest percentages. Now, it didn't hurt that uh, the, the Chef Conference was going on down the street, so a lot of people were bouncing to both. <laughs> but, um, you know, a lot of good action, some really good people, um, and, and obviously a, a big community uh, because, you know, Red Hat is all about the, the community, the open source, and all of the contributors, most of which are not working for Red Hat. Yeah, Stu, I was really impressed with Red Hat. I've always liked Red Hat, so you know, disclosure, I'm a big fan of Red Hat, you know, being at my age and having a computer science degree back when you know, the, the early stages of open source were really get taking their roots around commercializing open source. You saw that, that the Apache hit the scene, you're seeing JBoss, you saw that, what Linux did. And I, you know, I've always been a big fan of Red Hat, but one thing that struck me is that, two things. They're alpha geeks. They're, they're computer science guys, x -deck, a lot of systems guys, they're super technical. I mean, I always knew they're technical, but I, I didn't think they were like this uber technical at senior levels. So we're not talking about like product manager, we're talking about this, the senior staff of, of Red Hat, super technical tech athletes, as we say. And the other thing is, is that they're really low key. They don't like the grandstand, so their marketing is, I'm not going to say weak, I'm just saying that's not core, they're not big marketer. They don't like the grandstand, and that's part of the, the developer open source culture. You know, developers don't like to see people marketing a lot of stuff. It's, marketing is a waste of money from a developer standpoint. So, you see the same thing with Amazon. They don't always have the best amenities at their conferences, because they put all their dough into servicing the developers and having more guys fly to the event to do training sessions, to do hands-on labs. That's the difference, and I think that kind of hurts them in the public sphere, in the press, because the big PR firms get all the other firms get some press, but in the long game with open source, truth always rises to the top, and I think Red Hat is poised due to be major force in being what IBM did with Linux when Red Hat took advantage of that. Red Hat now can be the master of their own domain by setting the agenda for OpenStack. If they could do that and galvanize the industry with an ecosystem behind them, they could run the table on OpenStack and be the enterprise grade. Yeah, John, you bring up a good point because Red Hat has always played well to the Greek geeks. When you, you talk about the guys that are back there coding, you know, uh, you know, they've always known Linux and Red Hat, but if you went to the C-suite, a lot of times they were invisible. So how does Red Hat become more strategic um, you know, and, and help get, you know, you know, a bigger seat at that table. You know, Red Hat still, for all that they've done, they're only a $1.3 billion company, which makes them one of the larger storage company, uh, software companies, especially if you look at a company that is all software, you know, they're, they're in like the top 20, but compared to the big infrastructure and cloud guys out there, I mean, you know, Amazon's way beyond them, you know, almost triple the size uh, in, in revenue, um, and, you know, they're, they're, there's plenty of opportunities if Red Hat can hit it right. To well, Red Hat, they're not greedy, they're not a greedy company because they have balancing the upstream open source and commercializing it, and that's always a challenge in itself. We heard from the management them say it's, it's a balance. But here's what's happened with Red Hat. They got 65% market share in the enterprise in the open source software, and what's happened is back during the, the I'd say the down cycle of IT, 
you know, server consolidation, that open source is clearly a low cost alternative to proprietary vendors. So, you know, then with the server vendors and the mini computers going Wintel, you know, Red Hat was the logical choice, but now banks, people, real businesses have a lot of Red Hat and it's working good, now they got to extend that. So they don't have a lot of customer satisfaction problems, they have a customer demand problem to go to the cloud. So I think that's an interesting data point that, that we need to take in consideration. Yeah. So, so John, an interesting note of course, you said 65%, that's of revenue, because one of the biggest competitors uh, to, to Red Hat isn't necessarily uh, you know, the, the, the Microsofts or even the VMwares out there, but it's, it's the guys like Canonical and uh, even you know, Red Hat admitted this in a way uh, through really kind of that partnership slash acquisition that they did of CentOS. So, uh, you know, who are the big contributors to Linux? It's, it's not only Red Hat, uh, but you know, some scale guys like you know Google and Facebook out there that use Linux and build their business on Linux, but aren't buying from Red Hat. So, in the future, will they continue to buy from Red Hat? You know, what part of the market goes free? versus understanding that they need the Red Hat solution. Great points, too. I think that's a great clarification, and, and, and I want to get to your analysis in a second, but I want to ask you a question. At the beginning of the segment, we said, what are we looking for today? And we said, open stack adoption question, is the stack baked? What are some of the big names like Intel, Cisco, IBM getting behind it, you got Docker startup, and the DevOps culture. So I'd ask you, on these uh, points we were looking for today, open stack adoption your assessment based on the interviews in the past two days. So, uh, you know, I, I'd say OpenStack is about where we would expect it to be about four years into its development, which means that uh, there are real customers using it, but it's not widely deployed. Uh, you know, some revenue starting to come in, Red Hat has some of it, and uh, you know, there's still work to be done. When Icehouse comes out uh, in April, uh, expectation is that we will see a significant jump from Havana to Icehouse, just like we did when we got to Havana. So every six months, code's coming out and it's getting more mature. Uh, really, you know, the expectation is that within the next 12 to 18 months, uh, you know, there sure better be some meaningful revenue there because the ecosystem and everybody has put so much effort into it uh, that we should start to see things, uh, you know, moving to, to the positive on the revenue standpoint. Yeah, I mean, my take on OpenStack adoption was I didn't, I didn't hear what I wanted to hear today. I wanted to hear uh, much more OpenStack penetration. Um, what I did hear, though, is Red Hat is all in on OpenStack. They are committed. They have significant investment, both in dollars and in, in projects, and they do have meat in the bone. So they have production grade. Um, they're committed and the conviction's there, but I was looking for like a punch in the face, like, you know, like, we are so in. I didn't hear that OpenStack mojo. Yeah. I heard, yeah, we're tracking along. So I, it's like they're building the bridge, you know, span by span and just building it out. But I didn't get the knocked out of my chair uh, with the OpenStack vibe at all in terms of other, other than we're definitely going there. Yeah, and I think that's a commentary really on OpenStack and where that stands as opposed to anything that would be a negative on Red Hat. Yeah, uh, and absolutely, John, you know, if yeah. we, a month <laughs> from now, when we're in Atlanta, you know, we want to be talking to some customers and where they are deploying this. Yeah, I mean, I mean, they're not head faking OpenStack, it's clear, but, and we heard them, they're very cautious on what they ship and what they ship is bulletproof. That's what, they, that's what, they're, that's what they're saying. So, but I want to see more. I mean, I want to see Red Hat step up and, and stand up front and say OpenStack is going to be legit all the way, all the way in, we're all in on that. So, let's next question, is the stack big? From an OpenStack standpoint? Just overall, Red Hat, and, and, you, know, you got DevOps, you got on-prem, you got that continuation, I like the quote we heard uh, this morning around, uh, it's not mutually exclusive, there's a data center to the cloud, it's a continuum. Right, so, so, so John, they, they, they laid out their four pillars, right, physical, virtual, uh, you know, private and public clouds. Um, you know, Linux can now be anywhere. Uh, you know, so, so Red Hat Linux, uh, obviously in private cloud, they're doing real well. So it's, I think around 28% of, uh, you know, server revenue is going with, uh, you know, Linux today uh, in, in 2013 data. Uh, that, that, that's, that's pretty solid. It, it really, Red Hat was positioned it that it, it's a battle between Microsoft uh, and, and Red Hat for that revenue. Uh, secondly, from a virtualization standpoint, uh, KVM and uh, you know Rev specifically are gaining traction, uh, but you know it, it's not like they've knocked over VMware. VMware is still dominant in that space. Um, yes, there are companies that are looking to be able to get off of that licensing, 
uh, and especially if uh, you know they, they they look at something like OpenStack and that adoption, uh, that might be a pivot point to be able to move off VMware. But uh, you know, I, I, I didn't see anything that made me think that uh, you know we've seen a seismic shift in virtualization. Um, all the public cloud guys have lined up to support uh, Linux, and uh, you, know, you know we just have the commentary on OpenStack. Uh, so you know, really good progress and uh, a lot of opportunity. I think Tim, I think Tim Eaton said it best, and I think uh, I was actually um, not looking for anything in particular. I just want to see some signaling, but I think you know, there's no game-changing stack discussions going on around what's going on in in the stacks. I wanted to hear their vision real integrated stacks around OpenStack and uh, there wasn't anything there except for the container piece. So that is a real key. So to me, the stack discussion was, was, was enlightening to me. I learned a lot, it really knocked me out of my chair. The container piece is an app-centric, app delivery focus. It's really, so I heard four things there on the stack that was, was very, very pleasing from an uh, industry alignment standpoint that Red Hat got an A plus on. One, this notion of workloads, that any workload and focusing on the, on the job at hand, having the right configuration and agile for the workload around OpenStack. And the OpenStack is only going to ship bulletproof to the app enablement, you know, deployment, getting rapid acceleration for agile programming. The storage is interesting, right? You know, not a lot of sexy announcement, but this you know, interesting single namespace and the data virtualization is very interesting to me. And finally, the management piece was key. So, breadth of capabilities was highly impressive. Yeah, I mean, John, on that container piece, I mean, we, we, we talked about it a lot and because it is important, especially when we get to the point that it's not just on Linux, but it does Windows. That really uh, allows for some portability across clouds and across, uh, you know, virtualization platforms. So, you know, companies, you know, don't necessarily want to have, you know, hugely heterogeneous environments, but they do want to be able to move between environments if they so choose or have that flexibility. And uh, the, the containers, uh, you know, show some real promise to get there. Uh, as you've said a number of times, you know, it's an idea that's been around for a while and it seems like it's really coming to fruition now. So Stu, I think I just want to end my piece here and I'll let you get the final word in here is that, uh, you know, I think Red Hat is completely poised and just some notes I made here is that what virtualization has done to the Linux marketplace around the data center and the innovation around that, it's been spectacular and it's well documented. I mean, we have a lot of Cube interviews we do, we should actually do a summary documentary just from our Cube interviews. Virtualization has changed the game on the data center, it changed the game on all the players involved and that's been fantastic. Linux has been a big driver of that and then that's critical. So, so also the JBoss Linux combination is DevOps and this is not like a marketing strategy from Red Hat. It's not like they say, hey, let's do some DevOps. They actually have it in their DNA and they're super geeks. And finally, this container messaging is really the cloud. So virtualization for Linux for the data center and what containers have done for the cloud combined with the heritage of JBoss and Linux and wrap the ecosystem credibility around it. Red Hat has a lot of the, the rocket fuel right there, Stu. So I think, you know, ending this show, very enlightening, great to meet the personalities behind Red Hat. You know, they're, they're tech athletes, the guys like we'd like to talk to, but they have a lot of stuff going on that is interesting and relevant, not just a hey, Johnny come lately, let's throw some stuff to be sexy in the marketplace. Yeah, uh, John, uh, you know, we, we talked a lot about OpenShift here, uh, and th th there's a lot of big questions around PaaS. Uh, I thought it was really enlightening that Dell, uh, you know, really gave an endorsement uh, of, of both uh, Red Hat's position on OpenStack as well as OpenShift. But at the same time, Dell is also working with uh, Cloud Foundry and Pivotal. And uh, you know, our guest on the Cube, Sam, said uh, that ideally, you know, we're going to be able to work across PaaS platforms, um, and maybe the containers are actually going to help us uh, with, with some of that environment because uh, we don't. Don't want to have a, you know a total stack war all the time. Um, you know nobody wants Amazon to you know other than Amazon to win everything, um, and you know nor do we want uh, a PaaS layer to become a lock-in to a certain type type of environment. So uh, you know there's criticism that would say uh, OpenShift is going to push you heavily towards JBoss, and if you're pivotal, you know they're still going to want you to have VMware on that backend infrastructure. Uh, there's companies like you know IBM and Dell um, and, and HP. And Cisco that are going to you know, really step front to step forward to the table that make sure that there's flexibility and the customers are going to demand that because.
because at the end of the day, nobody wants to be locked in. You know, Stu, it's been a great run here. I want to just, the interviews were fantastic, we, you know, from Jim to the CEO to the guests that were the partners. We had, you know, De Dell was fantastic talking about their announcement. Um, Doug Fisher from Intel was really an amazing interview. Like, to hear Intel talk about their innovation strategy and, and answering candidly, quite frankly, the Cloudera question was awesome with Cloudera doing great job validation. Hortonworks is the red hat of, of Hadoop. Cloudera is now fully kind of IPO'd, if you will, with their big financing. So they're got, they have no pressure now uh, in the short term to, to deliver. They've got the long game going on, which is going to give them a lot of cover because they have a big vision. And between the big vision of Cloudera and the blocking and tackling of Horton, we're just seeing some massive big data action. Um, and then we had um, you know, uh, Cisco. Pa uh, Padma was awesome, talking about commitment to open source. And then just overall, the executives of Red Hat, getting to know them for the, our first show, Stu, was great to sit down with them. I'm looking forward to the next Red Hat Summit, where we can actually have more of a, of a year history and to find out kind of how they did and <laughs> what the, what's changing the business and the technology. And certainly, the OpenStack Summit's coming up in Atlanta. We'll be there live. Uh, it's going to be pretty amazing. Stu, thank you very much for uh, being the co-analyst, co uh, co-host co wingman this week. Appreciate it. Thanks to the team here, and let's look at Angle. Guys, great job. That's a wrap here from the Red Hat Summit. Uh, this is theCUBE signing off, and we'll see you at our next event.